I think Gore-Tex might just be one of the biggest marketing cons of all time. When you look at the science of what actually is possible, you get a completely different story to what they tell you in the marketing hype. So if you Google this, you'll see the internet is completely full of people complaining about the performance of their Gore-Tex coat, whether or not that's a result of condensation forming on the inside or actually total delamination of the layers in the coat. And we're seeing more and more outdoor experts rejecting the idea of using Gore-Tex as a viable way of staying dry and comfortable in the rain. Despite this, with the rise of Gorpcore, we're seeing more and more people buying these kinds of coats for fashion and day-to-day -day wear. Now, I don't do a lot of extreme backpacking these days either, but if I am caught in the rain, I want to be as comfortable as possible using the best approach for that. And I want my coat to last 20 years instead of one or two. This channel documents my attempts at trying to uncover unconventional wisdom for day-to-day -day workflows and products. In this video, I'm going to look at why I don't think Gore-Tex is the ultimate solution for staying dry and comfortable in the rain. It's interesting because whenever I talk to people about Gore-Tex, everyone obviously has this idea that they're waterproof and breathable. Very few people seem to actually understand that we're talking about a membrane-based coat, what that membrane is and how it works. So a membrane-based raincoat is essentially a fabric that's based on a membrane that's sandwiched between the inner layer and the outer layer. So you've got your inner layer for comfort, then the membrane, and then the outer layer for protection. The membrane itself is porous, so it allows vapor to pass through, but it will block liquid water. And that's the basic idea of a membrane-based coat. Gore-Tex is aggressively marketed as a breathable, waterproof raincoat. And that sounds perfect. Of course, you can be in the rain and your coat is breathable, so you don't feel sweaty and damp inside. That's the premise. And that sounds super compelling. And on all of the marketing, you see these incredible numbers that demonstrate this. So it sounds on the face of it like these things are brilliant at what they claim to do. But here's the catch. Nowhere does it say they can do these two things at the same time. So for this membrane to do its job and allow moisture to leave your coat from the inside to the outside, we need what's called a vapor pressure gradient. So it's not enough just to consider the relative humidity value because that is dependent on temperature. So in reality, what actually tends to happen is when it rains, the relative humidity in the outside air is easily nearly 100%. And that means the air at that temperature can't hold any more vapor, but without condensing and turning to liquid, rain. And what's interesting is the same thing actually can happen on the inside of your coat as you sweat and that moisture evaporates, you end up with nearly 100% relative humidity on the inside of your coat. But that tends to be at a higher temperature. And that means we do actually have a vapor pressure gradient. There is more pressure on the inside than the outside as a result of the temperature being higher. So in theory, that moisture does still want to leave the coat. The problem is, of course, that the air on the outside of the coat is still at 100% relative humidity. So as soon as the vapor tries to go through the membrane, it will hit that cooler surface and condense into condensation. The liquid water droplets from that then block the pores in the membrane and the membrane then completely fails at being breathable. So you can see that we've got this situation of two temperatures. Now what's interesting is the vapor transfer rate numbers that you see on the marketing for these products are tested in a situation where you have a difference in humidity. You actually have a lower humidity level on the outside of the test so you get a very strong effect to pull the moisture out. This is nothing like what happens in real life. So you can see we've got this basic problem. If the air outside is at 100% relative humidity it can't accept more moisture, whether it's hot or cold. So in hot ambient temperatures, it still can't accept more moisture, but because it's not much colder than the air inside your coat, you don't actually get condensation. Instead, all that happens is you end up with higher and higher relative humidity, up to 100% on the inside, and the air inside your coat can't then accept more vapor, which means any sweat that you produce never evaporates and it builds up as liquid sweat inside the coat. Pretty unpleasant. But of course, if the ambient temperature is colder outside, then we'll get condensation instead. So in either case, it's a lose-lose. You're gonna get wet on the inside of the coat. And this represents pretty much all normal real life use cases of Gore-Tex coats. And these situations are simply not represented by the testing processes that these things go through to generate the numbers used in their marketing hype. Of course, the other variable in vapor transfer science is the movement of air. If you had a higher air flow through and around your body, that would promote the moisture transfer away from your body. But you're wearing a coat so you don't get any of that effect, which is why, of course, a lot of these coats have now got huge ventilation options and giant pit zips and all of this kind of stuff. But if it's warm enough that you can get away with having all of those open, you'd probably just be better off without wearing the coat at all. So all of that science basically means that this whole approach is coming from a place of a massive disadvantage. But the problem gets even worse than that. Because in real life, this membrane needs to be protected with an outer fabric, you end up with an even more serious compromise on the membrane's performance. So the outer fabric is a normal woven material. The problem 
problem is in the rain, that outer fabric would absorb moisture and you'd end up with a film of liquid water just on the outside of the membrane. This would of course prevent all moisture going through that membrane because it's just a solid liquid wall of water. So to prevent this problem, these coats come from the factory with what's called DWR, durable water repellent, applied to this outer fabric. And that's why when you buy a brand new coat, it beads up all the water on the outside. You get the droplets, everyone loves it. It looks really cool. And that's the DWR. Now that actually isn't anything to do with the waterproofing because as we know, that comes from the membrane behind that layer. The only effect of the DWR is to prevent wetting out and the impact on breathability. There's some really alarming anecdotal ideas behind the other issue with wetting out. And that is because you have liquid water, which is way denser than the moist vapor on the inside. That liquid water can actually evaporate through the membrane membrane, increasing the humidity on the inside of the coat even faster. But in terms of the DWR that's actually applied at the factory, this is where things start to get really shady. I bet if you know someone who wears a Gore-Tex coat and you've been out with them in the rain, you'll have noticed the outer fabric wetting out, which of course shouldn't happen because of the DWR. But the reality is this DWR isn't actually that durable and it does wear out. I've seen this time and time again in my friend's Gore-Tex coats. It's just, it, it just doesn't last that long and you get the wetting out effect. And as soon as you see that wetting out effect, on the coat you know the breathability is completely gone and this is where it starts to get super weird so obviously these Gore-Tex coats have a state-of-the-art DWR applied to them at the factory now up until very recently that used PFCs which are these forever chemicals that build up in the environment highly toxic carcinogenic all the rest of it really nasty stuff and they actually got under so much pressure that they don't even use this anymore which in itself is actually a further compromise on performance because that DWR can no longer repel greases and oils and the impact of grease and oils on a Gore-Tex membrane is that it can create channeling as a result of clogging up the pores as well. So this whole thing is really a very obviously a losing battle of compromises. But the interesting thing is you can't buy this same product. But if I was selling a coat like this that needed a product to be reapplied, I'd look at that and think that's a great way of kind of getting a bit of recurring income from people that buy the coats. But they don't actually sell it. They sort of say you can buy DWR from anywhere and blah blah blah. It's like that doesn't make any sense. Why can't you have the original proper product? And I personally think the only possible reason for that is that it is just so nasty it wouldn't be allowed to be sold direct to people to use at home. And crazily the environmental impact doesn't actually stop with the DWR. The production of the membrane itself is associated with the use of these forever chemicals and there are lawsuits going on because of water pollution near the Gore-Tex factories and all of this kind of stuff. You might have seen the film Dark Waters about DuPont and what's really interesting about that is the inventor of Gore-Tex worked at DuPont before setting up Gore-Tex. So if Gore-Tex is so fundamentally flawed at the science level and at the kind of implementation level where we see these kind of fixes for fixes all the way down the line trying to make the membrane perform the way it was supposed to. What's the alternative? Well I've used Paramo raincoats which have a completely different approach and they're designed to move liquid water away from you. It's not just vapor. There's no membrane. It's a totally radically different approach and I find them to be super super comfortable, really enjoyable coats to wear in the rain in a way that I've just never felt wearing a membrane-based coat. So watch this video next to learn more about that.